Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter and welcome to the Faith Lutheran Church Second Service Easter Sermon. This morning, Pastor Jonathan Holmes preaches on the words of comfort based on the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Let's listen in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen Alleluia. And thanks be to God for those words that he has risen. For he did die on Good Friday, but he did not stay dead, but rose on Easter. And that is a good word, because words have meaning. There should be no surprise that the dictionary is as long as it is, because each word has a different meaning for the most part. In fact, when these words are combined in different ways, the words together can explain almost anything. Almost anything. The words can either kill or make a lie. Words can bring fear, or they can bring comfort. This is especially the case with God's Word. You see, God's Word of the law kills and brings fear and death. Well, God's Word of the Gospel brings life and gives comfort and hope. So you can imagine with me the setting of our Gospel reading for today because there was a word that brought fear to the disciples and all of Jesus' followers. He is dead. So you can imagine the fear and the negative emotions that they're feeling at this time. The sadness, the anguish, especially for Mary. See, her teacher and Lord had been killed in an atrocious way. In fact, he was murdered upon the cross. And if anybody knows anything about crucifixion, this is a dreadful way to die. There is nothing in modern methods of torture that can even begin to compare what Jesus went through. If there did, if there was one today with such a tool of cruelty, I doubt any of us would have the intestinal fortitude to handle what we are seeing, even to think about it. Even the movie The Passion of the Christ doesn't give the device of torture justice. In the movie, you can still tell that Jesus is human. While in the scriptures, we are told that Jesus was beaten and bloody to a point where you can no longer tell that he was even a human being. This is what Mary Magdalene and the other Mary from our text for today had just witnessed a few days ago. It's hard to imagine that a man like this could live any longer. And so they probably at this point lack any hope, any comfort. There probably appears to be no longer any future to hold. In fact, the disciples, the apostles, the twelve, the eleven at this point, chosen by Christ for a specific reason, refused to come out of hiding for fear of the Jews. All because Jesus' body lies in the tomb. Or so they think. At a time when it seems all is lost, there's a great earthquake. There's fear. But when the earth is finished shaking, the Marys continue to the tomb. And as they arrive, they find the soldiers who have been guarding the tomb, the brave soldiers of Rome, have passed out from fear. You see, there is an angel of the Lord appearing to them to bring them a word. Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. 
There you will see him. See, I have told you. Yes, there is fear to be had. Angels are not cute creatures as much as Precious Moments likes to tell us. They look like something from our worst nightmares. Why else do they think that every angel that appears says, Fear not or do not be afraid? But even with the way the angel looks, he still brings those words of comfort. I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified, but he is not here. For he has risen as he said, Come see the place where he had laid. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And these are words of comfort for you. For God has sent me, an angel, a messenger, to tell you that your sins are forgiven on the cross and that you are now righteous before your Father in heaven, no longer living in fear or anguish, but comfort and hope. That is the word of comfort of the cross and the empty tomb for you on this day. You see, in these events, you find that God has kept His promises. He has conquered death. He has conquered Satan. He has crushed the head of the serpent. And He forgives you all of your sin. That's right. Jesus is alive. You are righteous. God keeps His promises. God has kept His word. In fact, to prove this point, Jesus appears to his disciples. He appears to them in Galilee, where he continues to teach them that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That he did it for you freely, without any merit or worthiness in you. In fact, he gives you these free gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation, and never asks for anything in return, except that he can call you his child his treasure. That is what the death and resurrection of Jesus is for you. For you see, it shows us that we will obtain one day, at the end of all things, our very own resurrection. You see, on that last day, you will be joined to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in a very unique, unimaginable way. You will be a new creation. You'll have the culmination of all things that has been promised to you up to this point. You see, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so hear these words. You are forgiven. You are justified. You are righteous through Christ. You see, this fact will remain into eternity. And so let no one tell you any different, not even the devil himself. For the fact remains, this is God's word of promise and assurance to you, that you have life and salvation, all a free gift from God to you. Why? Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah and amen. Thanks for listening to the Sunday Sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.